Hi everyone. First, I want to thank all of you for all your support of my content on X, on YouTube, on Telegram and TikTok. It really means a lot to me through the years. I had a show called The Politics of Survival with Tara Reid. Well, I took a break from that. Now that I'm living in Moscow, Russia, I'm going to be booting up a new podcast. But before I get into that, I wanted to just say thank you to the people who really helped me and volunteered their time and effort and energy helping to get my show out, even as much as I was shadow banned and YouTube pulled down my shows as soon as I put them up. But they still helped and made sure that I got out there. And you can still find a lot of my shows on YouTube. And you can find them also on Rockfin, on Odyssey, on Telegram, on X, and TikTok will soon have bits and pieces of my show, like for a minute or two. So I wanted to thank Indy from INN and Greg, Reef, and everyone who was involved with my show, who gave so much effort and time and really cared. And you know, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. As I move forward in the world, I will fondly remember those American tech guys that really helped me get my show going and they have their own shows to watch. It's really important to support independent content. You know, not having a corporate overlord is very hard. It's hard to get by. My show didn't have any sponsors. It didn't have any kind of money at all. And so it was a labor of love. And I continue that labor of love here in Moscow, Russia with my new show, The Tara Reed Show. And this podcast, you can find more about, again, at Tara Reed, T-A-R-A-R-E-A-D-E, podcast.com. And that's my link tree. It has all the links where you can watch it. My first guest is going to be really interesting. I'm sure you will enjoy it. It will have the same kind of flavor, a little shorter, but I think it's really important right now that we get the truth out there. And the more they try to suppress and censor us, the more we need to use our voices and use whatever platform we have to lift up others who maybe are being silenced. And I will continue with that as I go forward with the Tara Reid Show. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Hi, Sasha. And I call you Sasha. Your name is Alexandra. But I mean, I know you're Sasha and I feel so lucky to know you. I met you when I first moved to Moscow, Russia, uh, through a, a mutual friend who became your husband. <laughs> I just actually feel that uh, you've been part of my life for a long time now. It's only what? It's only a year and uh, a little bit more than a year. But yeah, yeah, two, like, almost two years. Uh, maybe yeah. five at least. So maybe uh, life in Russia is like, uh, I don't know, it's like mm, several years in one because we have a lot of uh, different events, uh, a lot have happened to us through that yeah. year. And I think we have a lot of to share. So thanks a lot for having me today. Well, you had a lot happen in the last year. Um, you are now married with um, a beautiful, beautiful son. Yes. So last time I've been... Uh, uh, to your uh, show, I just was a journalist, single, and yeah, of course I was dating, but officially I wasn't married, and yeah. <laughs> and of course I wasn't a mom, and now I'm having a almost six uh, years old, oh, <laughs> months, six months, months, six yeah. months old baby, and. It feels incredible. Actually, I never thought I could be a mom. Well, let's talk about you for a minute because you are not from Moscow, Russia. If you want to tell, you know, our audience watching um, where you're from and then how you ended up in Moscow and doing the work that you do. Actually, my uh, home city, my motherland is uh, 5,000 kilometers from here, from Moscow. It's beautiful city, Irkutsk. We know that, uh, unfortunately, not many people know about this city just because of uh, it its existence mostly about the world famous lake Baikal I think this lake is really famous uh, not only yeah. in Russia and, uh, uh, I know that you haven't been there before but we definitely need to go there together and it's our plan for nearest future growing up there there was uh, I think something that I keep uh, in my life uh, forever because that's very healthy way of growing up you have a lot of fresh air, beautiful nature. It's just 40 minutes to this lake, to the nearest point mm -hmm. from Irkutsk. And you can uh, even drive a car. I used to take my uh, uncle's car and <laughs> uh, drive uh, on Baikal ice. So it's like wow. no rules. It's much the strongest ice ever. And you can just feel this freedom. 
<laughs> that was amazing. Uh, and of course, I found my um, something that I want to do in my life for for living. Uh, that's uh, journalism. That's uh, being a presenter because you can, you have a unique chance to uh, communicate with audience different ways, live audience, and also uh, doing this uh, video co connections. And uh, I started work uh, in local regional tv station since i was 17 everyone was uh, telling wow <laughs> 17 years old yeah and everyone was telling please uh change your age in social media no one needs to know that uh someone under 18 <laughs> working for us so uh yeah. i was a news presenter and also we had a great thing uh international department inside our regional uh tv that means that we had a chance to work with uh uh, Chinese, Korean, uh, Japanese, uh, mm -hmm. Mongolian uh, journalists and uh, also doing great projects together. Even uh, CCTV uh, Russia, uh, this uh, channel that uh, used to work in Russian language in Chinese central national TV. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a really great part of my life. And then I had a, a kind of promotion. I moved back to Moscow. It's almost eight years now and wow. uh, I actually I didn't feel the difference because I was in the same rush I was just running, <laughs> running that's why I thought I will never have family because I was doing only what I loved there was new projects here a new level of uh, uh, broadcasting and uh, then also that was another great part of my life uh, I had a great chance to meet uh volunteer movement it's huge in russia especially we felt it during uh, covid days i think uh, in mm -hmm. different countries uh, people felt this uh, support of young people especially and not only uh, young uh, people all over russia they just uh, united a lot and now the same happening during special military operation and uh, i mm -hmm. joined this movement it was um, 2000 17 so in the very beginning of uh, some interesting thing we uh, decided to make youth volunteer movement inside our president's organization so right. in Russia, we have only one uh, public organization uh, whose leader is uh, president vladimir putin and uh, we have uh, actually the same goals that unite us we just wish the best future and the best reality for our country so what can we do we just can think in each big problem in each trouble you can just find a part that you can improve part mm -hmm. that you can influence on and that's what we exactly were doing when uh, it was covid days we were helping people especially an old gen generation because they had to uh, stay at houses not live in their homes mm -hmm. and we could bring them food we can help with medicine support and a lot of a lot of things that actually just in our power <laughs> the same happening now because uh people all around uh, russia they just uh, united for you know helping uh guys and not only guys also women on the front line and we just uh making small things that we can do it's sometimes it's fundraising sometimes it's uh something nice for for example some souvenirs something from home that we can uh, delivered yeah. online so a lot of things that you can do just with your own hands and um, that's actually very light part only mm -hmm. this part that you can see but it's like iceberg a lot of work is uh, hidden underwater and uh, what we were doing uh, in the office we were really managing to get the whole young people uh, together in our country and uh, that was very interesting period of my life five, almost six years. And uh, during that days, we also had a chance to um, meet in person our president because uh, young volunteers mm -hmm. were invited to Kremlin. Uh, we were invited to Kremlin to uh, this first after COVID days meeting uh, with our president. And uh, there was two hours and a half long. And uh, there was uh, this kind of atmosphere that actually never been before because it's just a uh, real talk it's just real conversation it's uh, not for cameras it's not for what, what, what was that like what was that like for you to to i mean here you are you're you're, you're doing media and then you're you're involved with this youth group which sounds wonderful and, and really had a way of, of getting people doing things at a time when everybody had to be shut down so it's a way to connect right but what was it like to talk directly to your president putin what was that 
What was that interaction like for you? You know, I actually, I knew that behind my back, that's uh, more than 10 years experience of doing such a kind of things, big events. But mm -hmm. this actually uh, means nothing because since the uh, first moment that he, uh, since first several minutes that he came into the audience, I actually felt that it's not an event. It's a mm -hmm. kind of business meeting, a kind of right. uh, just straight conversation about everything we have for now and uh, what we can make in nearest future. And I <laughs> immediately understood that, you know, I prepared some notes and I couldn't <laughs> just nothing because uh, the minute I start talk, he just looked at me and I realized that I only can say it with my own thoughts, with my own words. And okay, I decided I need to change the whole thing. Just talk. And he's a very straight person. So you can see if it's really interesting for him or he's just thinking about something else that he wants to right now, uh, Rina, because that's more important that, uh, than the thing that you're talking about. And that's actually great because you don't need to follow some script. You just... Mm -hmm. See the moment, feel it, and try to make it useful. You felt, yeah, you felt like he was being really authentic with you and just direct and just like not, he seemed just very like down to earth. Is that and what he was like? When we see it on TV, some meetings, mm -hmm. it's just episodes. Sometimes you can't just <laughs> feel it uh on your own. Uh, that was a very laid back atmosphere, very comfortable because we even, we didn't come to the audience. That was actually this hall where a lot of, maybe you, you see it a lot of times, it's Yekaterininsky Hall of Kremlin, where was this uh, very important document sign about Donetsk region now joined to Russia. So that was mm -hmm. uh, Yekaterininsky Hall of Kremlin. And uh, we just came like Five minutes before the meeting, we came there and wow. we were, we were wait, waiting uh, just next door in another hall, having a cup of tea. And that was very friendly atmosphere, not like someone, you know, on big events, usually uh, there are organizers who is trying to push you to make you be mm -hmm. serious and like be quiet, wait for him to come. Yeah. Oh, nothing like that. And he just came because it's his office, basically. He works there. He yeah. just another meeting he just came to this room and that was just with no announcement and i actually forgot <laughs> my plan and i said oh i need to go back to that uh, room where we were several minutes ago and take my pen i did it and when i came it was just a second before he <laughs> appears oh. i just realized that if i were late no one will even uh, call me and tell the sasha sasha right, right. come and probably say like oh I'm so sorry. <laughs> right, right, right. the fan. So that was very, and uh, he feel people. He feels very well. He has a great experience of uh, working, you know, in different spheres. That's why it's just very easy for him to calm down young guy who is trying to, you know, he has a very big pressure of this responsibility. He came here to Moscow from his region. He wants to tell the most important things from his organization that he's now trying to deliver. And uh, he can make it with only one uh, sight. With only one sight, he can calm him down. Like, don't worry, just tell me what you really wanted to say. At the, the same time, you can see that if uh, someone is really crossing the line, he can uh, give the same one sight, but it will be with another thought in it. You can all also catch it straight away that, yeah. oh, huh, this was too much. And this is something that is unchangeable, something that is very important for us and we can't cross it. So that was very interesting experience. And um, after that, I think that uh, there was actually very something that I should have been uh, ex expected. You know, not so far in Moscow. Actually, that was during eight month huge exhibition on VDNH that mm -hmm. was uh, dedicated to our achievements, the latest achievements of Russia. These 20 years of uh, our modern history were presented there, represented the very big way because we had uh, a lot of new pavilions uh, and also everything that we had on this uh, culture. From each region of Russia, right? To explain that to people who might not know, it was like a display that like you could be walking in Siberia and then walking in the Urals, but it was all in this area, right? Yeah, actually that's very famous uh, Russian and uh, even from Soviet Union, very famous territory in Moscow. Mm -hmm. And why it's so famous, uh, that was all always 
only for representing the greatest achievements of Soviet days, the greatest achievements uh, of uh, Soviet people. And we used to know it as something from the past, something that's, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, gone to history and we never thought that something modern can be nowadays on this territory. And that's great because based on what we already had there, that's beautiful, incredibly beautiful pavilions built by Soviet people and telling about mm -hmm. this uh, history. They all were renewed and at the same time new object appears. This territory became a mini copy of Russia nowadays with, uh, you were ex exactly right, in one pavilion, the biggest one. We have uh, we had all territories, all uh, Russian, Russian Federation subjects, all uh, regions together there was a uh, mm -hmm. small exhibitions of each region and of course there was this uh, nice competitor spirit because they were trying to compete and show how their region is rich with uh, people with talents with the uh, level of uh, economic development so that was uh, all the time this um, challenging spirit but at the same time there was very friendly atmosphere and actually we just uh, sometimes we say that yeah i really proud of being russian i feel that that's the country that i every day want to be proud of but we just don't have enough arguments why when for example foreigners will ask why you love your country of course you will mm -hmm. say that's the place where i was born that's my house that's my family that's everything mm -hmm. that reminds me about my child right. about precious moments but it's just you know emotions but here we could got real facts and that was very important for young generation because they could just you know yeah. done very modern way everything was interactive a lot of uh, media opportunities were involved so they could use this technology you know, that's a really everything. good point we don't have you know we don't really have anything like that in the u.s and it, it would be helpful so i think that that kind of program is great because it reminds young people of the beauty of the regions like like okay this is siberia and and like bacall and this is this is the beautiful parts of nature and kamchatka and you know you know vladivostok which is on the other side of russia <laughs> from moscow and i think it's so important that um that you're able to do that and because the u.s like russia is very diverse and we have the southeast the northwest the west coast these and all are so different and the cultures are different and the food is different everything and the nature you know i think it's really important to be able to say okay i love my country but why but why like what you were just saying so that's really cool now is this exhibit a permanent fixture now or is it gone where is it now so during that eight month actually there was mm -hmm. all the time uh, we expected that it will be uh, just for several, for a couple of months. But then we just couldn't stop people coming. <laughs> I mean, organizers mm -hmm. realized how many people really wants to come to Moscow to see that people were booking their trips. They were taking holidays. Wow. They all work to visit it. And from, from different countries, our, uh, you know, Russian citizens that currently live mm -hmm. in other countries, they were also coming, bringing their families. Okay. And that's why uh, that's been for so long uh eight months and 18 almost 18 millions of people visited that so wow that was really huge million. thing but at the same time of course you know when uh, we were counting the day till the end it was <laughs> till 8 of july of course mm -hmm. everyone was discussing maybe that will be forever how everything can be just done now and uh, they made a decision on government level that it will be now in another form. So now we have a kind of museum. It's legacy oh. of this exhibition. And uh, it's like in the very beginning now. But I know that mm -hmm. it will be only increasing, getting bigger. And uh, that's the main thing, that we have something that will remind us about this great event. And also after that, you know, a lot of uh, new project appears. And also some pavilions stay uh, on Vedenha, for example, Atom, pavilion from from our state atomic energy corporation uh, ros atom it's still there because it has uh, several floors deep underground and several mm -hmm. several on the ground so it's like iceberg also and um, that's amazing thing very interesting to visit and you mentioned iceberg speaking of iceberg so i wanted to speaking of iceberg you are one of the only people i've ever met that has been to the north Pole. And not just going to the North Pole, but like you went in style, you went on a ship that's a, a nuclear powered 
icebreaker and it's a very exclusive trip. Uh, I was really excited to hear about this. Could you talk a little bit about how you came to be on this trip and, and what you did? And I know, um, you know, our, our editors here are going to be able to, to show your videos and your pictures as we're talking, which will really enhance <laughs> the experience. But could you talk a little bit about going to the North Pole? Actually, everything is connected. I could have been said that I just made a wish and that happened. <laughs> but uh, it's not the whole story, of course. Um, thanks to that exhibition, uh, because I was covering uh, the whole uh, event uh, during this eight month, uh, mm -hmm. being a part of a great team of uh, uh, Russian Znania <laughs> Society, and uh, we had a lot of guests in the studio from main Russian corporations, uh, organizations, and one of them, of course, was from Ross Atom. And I used to know them before uh, we were doing some projects together, but uh, this meeting was uh, very important because we uh, were talking about this special fifth Ross Atom International Arctic Expedition. And wow. that was incredible. They were describing everything in details, how it's going to be, who already uh, got to the North Pole with these special uh, opportunities that they provide. And of mm -hmm. course, I was, you know, kind of dreaming that what if? And into several weeks, I receive a call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which really changed my life in a way because they just remembered that we had some projects together and we just meet at, at the studio. So mm -hmm. let's do it again. We really, we really looking for a host. We think you will be perfect for that. But you know what? At the same time, that was a very important moment in my life. We were preparing to meet the whole family from England because my my husband is uh, from England and uh, yes. my Russian part of family. So, you know, two moms, two grandmas, us. <laughs> my little son, he was four months old that time. Oh my goodness. And we we were planning uh, some trip to Sochi. It was in mm -hmm. August, in August 2024. Right. And I just, you know, I was in doubts. I said, that's amazing opportunity. Once time, uh, once a lifetime opportunity, but I need to think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They said that, that you know, actually uh, I was invited as a volunteer, but um, at the same time to have this trip for yourself, uh, just as a tourist on commercial base, you need to pay two and a half million ru rubles. So it's wow. quite a big thing. Two and a half million rubles in dollars is, oh, is that 20,000? <laughs> you have to help me with we the can, math. We, we can check for current. We can check. We can check. Rate. Two million rubles is is a lot. Yeah, that's like yeah, it's twenty thousand dollars. It's over twenty thousand dollars for that trip. Wow. So you it can be. To just go. For example, if you paper. take mortgage, if you take mortgage in Russia uh, on very good, um, you know. Yeah. As just by the very good su su suggestion, you can pay mm -hmm. uh, this uh, as a first base payment and have a mm -hmm. mortgage for a flat in Moscow. <laughs> so wow. it's quite a uh, quite a big thing. And it's only uh, one one place in a cabin. And cabin can be for two people also. And I was mm -hmm. lucky to have one single, uh, single bed cabin. And uh, that was great. So it's like five million ru rubles. And so I came to my husband, to my family <laughs> with this story and said, you know what? <laughs> I had it. I have two news, one bed, one, <laughs> one amazing, <laughs> amazing news. Yeah that I got a suggestion to to visit North Pole and bad news it's exactly the same dates we were planning our trip and um, thanks to my family I need to say real thanks because they understood they supported they understand. yeah this is the once in a lifetime oh yeah. <laughs> it's really but we understood yeah. it and we will take care of baby and so on everything will be fine it's 10 days long 10 wow, days 10 no days. connection mobile phone not working nothing nothing <laughs> <laughs> and you just need to focus on that and you know like other world is not existing at the moment you just on this uh, trip and uh, so I said yes <laughs> I'll go that was actually the first time I faced with um, one of these facts that I shall be proud of my country because I used to uh, working at the exhibition I used to say that Russian Federation has the unique nuclear powered fleet and uh, this is unique advantage of Russia but for me, you know, that was uh, words, interesting fact, mm -hmm. but I didn't experience it before uh, my, my, myself. And uh, that was the moment when I really realized what does it mean? Because just to describe that icebreaker, actually on fleet, they have superstitions. I don't know why they uh, don't love to call it sheep or other different words. We only, we only need to say icebreaker. <laughs> 
icebreaker. You only call oh, it an icebreaker. icebreaker. Okay. And I was like, okay, for journalists, it's very hard. You need to have a lot of uh, synonyms, but yeah. okay. <laughs> so the icebreaker is uh, like 16 floors house height and like 35 cars um, in one line. Wow. This uh, size, if we just look at, 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 at this uh, in Murmansk uh, city where it's uh, mm -hmm. located now. And uh, also it has uh, incredible power. It's uh, 75,000 uh, horsepower. <laughs> inside wow also that's um you know i've been told that's amazing that that's actually the most powerful in russia and in the world mm -hmm. because uh this type of machines only we have this type right. of machines and this is uh also a very special icebreaker exactly on board of this icebreaker during russian olympic games during sochi olympics in 2014 olympic flame was delivered to the north pole <laughs> so participants from different uh countries were on board and uh, yeah. they it, that was uh, also a very unique moment. No one did it before. And so it's, that's a really special uh, thing. And um, yeah, I got my cabin. I got my team around. And who were these people? Uh, that's actually why it's so unique, because you don't have to pay. You can just use your knowledges, your talents to reach to the mm -hmm. North Pole. That's what all participants did. There was just talented, intelligent school children from different regions of Russia. They had to compete to get to that point because uh, they all winners of a lot of different competitions. Uh, they have their own projects mm -hmm. that they're developing. Uh, they're not only connected uh, with nuclear uh, technologies and they're not only studying to be engineers. They have actually different professions some of them are actors <laughs> but they all have interest to science to different yeah, for the yeah. they Beautiful. all try and they were provided with a great team of speakers there was scientists famous russian scientists they were some like the main uh, people from some russian corporations in different spheres mm -hmm. of course from ross atom itself and uh, that was in a very layback atmosphere. So we were having dinners, breakfast, all together, the same tables. And we have only one, we had only one rule. You can't say no. If someone coming to you at the dinner or just catching you on the way where you're running <laughs> uh, from one room to another, you must talk. You must always be in a good mood because that's, I think it's very important. Yeah role you not came here just you know for your own i'm going to not yeah. call and nothing else no that's the that's your mission if you have uh unique knowledges you need to share and that's why our program our yeah. skin was so busy like at 7 a.m we had a uh, morning exercises on a helipad mm -hmm. it's open area so just imagine you keep moving on ice break yeah. it's somewhere in barrens of sea <laughs> you're getting <laughs> yeah. closer to the north pole and mm -hmm. you're just doing morning exercises. And then you had a lot of uh, lectures and different activities. And of course, evening event that was all about talents, all about singing different songs and different languages and sharing our cultures. And why it was so unique also, that was first uh, international expedition. And uh, ah. that's why uh, I was in invited also because um, we had a participants from 15 countries 15 and 15 countries and that's, that's amazing uh, that's young people who uh they actually they kind of experts in uh their own sphere some of them working in medicine because you know that nuclear power can be used in uh this peaceful mm -hmm. process and also in different spheres in medicine at the same time yes and, absolutely absolutely and mm -hmm. these people they also could share something that 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 they know something that they work on their projects and at the same time they came here to learn new things you know this an energy week uh, that was in moscow not so far that was exactly this thing our president said that russia is uh, ready to work uh, in partnership with other countries uh, concerning mm -hmm. peaceful nuclear energy they 
keep doing that mm -hmm. for decades now. We have a lot of uh, nuclear power plants built in different countries, and uh, they're not only building the object, they're not only uh, making infrastructure around it, they also are dealing with education of young engineers. They oh, nice. bring in the whole new sphere of, of economic into that country. At the same time, it feels like we helping, uh, Russia helps uh, to get this uh, Te technological independence for right, right, and independence. and innovation. Yeah, there's a lot of focus on innovation. And and I wanted to ask you too about you know because based on your photos about the nature that you were seeing. Did you see um, what kind of animals or or mammals did you see in the water? Like I you know your and um, on this expedition, what 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 did you did you see polar bears? Did you see you know walruses? What did you see? Actually, we were the first expedition ever. They didn't face with the polar bear. <laughs> oh. And uh, that was a kind of sad because, yeah, you know, yeah. Paul, first thing that you can imagine it's a polar bear. But at right. the same time, you just, it's all about making connections. And we right. were very separate with the team, with the uh, crew of uh, Icebreaker. We could have. Uh, some small talks we could even we even were making a small figure of bear together it's like made of uh, something plastic so we just mm -hmm. got some friends there and they shared one of a uh, crew member just member of a crew he shared with me the best video of bear i've ever seen because it was just in previous expedition young and probably hungry polar bear came to the icebreaker so close that he could just film him uh, from yeah. uh, from the upper desk. And oh, okay. that that's a great video. Maybe uh, we, we will show it. So uh, he's like a human being. He's just standing yeah. on his uh, two feet and like, hey, you, do you have any food for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, nothing. Uh, not interesting. <laughs> and that was so cool. And uh, yeah. for them not something uh, very incredible they're just like okay you know the captain of icebreaker ruslan sasov mm, he reached to the north pole 50 times he's been to the north pole for 50 times and or is they very experienced uh, but at the same time for us everything was for the first time wheels i've seen walruses and that was a very walruses yes unique thing big tusks yeah, real, really big. I still can't understand how they're moving because it must <laughs> yeah. just, uh, stop them. But they do it somehow. And there was a mother and her baby. And Aww. she was feeding him and like uh, maybe teaching him some things. And mm -hmm. I thought it's maybe young lovers. But then uh, we had a <laughs> national, uh, our Russian Geographical Society members on board and they uh, explained everything. They actually were playing a, a kind of game. They started a competition on, on board. It was about how many pictures of wild animals you will take during our trip and you will be rewarded for that. And uh, that was really interesting. I was a you know host that so I was sleeping for three hours and unfortunately just running all over the place so yeah I didn't have time to really uh, watch animals but some of them I saw some of them I could just uh, see already on pictures and that was great and even everything so different actually when you live in so you arrive in you live in the Murmansk port Murmansk city it's just maybe for two days uh, you feel very mm -hmm warm and nice summer you can just walk like that outside yeah. enjoy it but then on yeah. the third day weather is changing completely you feel it like we had a very good like very warm courts and everything but it wasn't even enough because as closer we uh, get uh, get into the north pole it's just like winter winter is coming and uh, <laughs> if we just uh, according to facts that was since minus five till plus five this kind of thing. Wow, right it's around there. Polish. And that's in August. Hey, but, I wanted to ask you too, um, there were some really good amenities on this um, icebreaker as well, right? Can you talk a little bit about the, uh, was there a banya or or no? What, what was, <laughs> what's on there? Uh, so we were divided. It was uh, more than uh, 100 people on board. I mean, just participants and also around 100 its uh, crew members. And um, if we're talking about uh, our um, special uh, icebreak of knowledge trip, children had their 
own schedule. Of course, they couldn't do yeah. some activities that adults was allowed, but I'm in adult team, yeah. so <laughs> uh, I had an opportunity to see everything. Actually, that's very comfortable uh, thing. It's not just, I can imagine that those days to reach to the North Pole, it's just something, it's very hard physically. It was very challenging each day, but this time, it's just like luxury resort on board because you have sauna, you have swimming pool <laughs> uh, filled with... You have a uh, swimming pool? Yeah, and that wow. was... It's heated, heated uh, Arctic Sea, uh, Arctic Ocean water. Uh, oh my goodness. So that's something... Pure that, water, that must have been amazing. It's salted, it's like, you know, it's like best spa ever <laughs> you can have. And... Uh, they have a restaurant, an amazing chef. He's been working in uh, different five-star hotels all around the world. And he brought mm -hmm. all the experience and his team on board. And that was amazing diversity of food. And uh, that's uh, the whole, like, one uh, story that you can... Yeah, every day we had different dish. And <laughs> our international participants also, they were like, wow, you have such amazing food in Russia. <laughs> And uh, That's uh, true. Yeah. you have library, you have souvenir shop, Whatever. you have uh, uh, this spa part gym. So you, if you have your time, if you have some time, uh, some break in your mm -hmm. schedule, you can use all these uh, nice things. And uh, actually there was one, only one uh, missed opportunity that I mm, feel pity about, that when we reached to the North Pole, there was unique opportunity for adults to swim in Arctic Ocean. But... Uh, as I said, it was, uh, it seems like not very cold because just minus five, but uh, because the cold wind, it felt like uh, minus 25. That's why yeah. I didn't decide. But actually, that was like that. So they put some um, stairs that you can use to go deep in water. They give you some um, rope that will help you in case of emergency. The whole point is that you need to uh, go down water and uh, then swim to the icebreaker. So icebreaker is maybe several meters far. Wow. You can feel a real hero if you do that. You touch the icebreaker and you go back. But not many girls could do that, mostly boys. Uh. And girls, they said that, oh my gosh, I just got into water and it's like, you just can't move. You feel you perfect. Yeah, you can't move. It's numb. And numb. You just, yeah. oh, no, no, no. I want, I want to go back. And I thought, okay, okay, okay. I need to keep working. I almost lost my voice, so I can't. Yeah, no, you didn't want to get sick. Yeah. I decided that actually, if I want to touch water, I can do it uh, other way. Uh, so yeah. I, uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it's uh, actual water from uh, uh, Arctic uh, Ocean. And oh, wow! Uh, actually, that's, that's so been cool. given. That's been given to all the participants. We did it for all the participants, and uh, it's yeah. this north, nineteen degrees north. So uh, that's something special. And you know, actually, on North Pole they have uh, two types of water. One is salted; it's from Arctic Ocean, and another one is just uh, made of ice. Uh, and it's uh, just nice water that you can drink. And I tried it. Wow. <laughs> and uh, but uh, the most interesting thing that uh, it's melting. But um, sometimes you can see that it's so deep that you think that it just can't be made of ice because it's so deep mm -hmm. in the ocean, but it's still being not salted. So that's something interesting. And the, this thing when you just on a fifth day we reach the North Pole and uh, that's another superstitious uh, they never sail us they will never say what day we will reach the North Pole despite they did it a uh, hundred times they just maybe we will reach the North Pole we might reach the North Pole <laughs> and yeah. uh, when you come in closer to that North to that uh, 90 degrees North you feel that this is the part of uh, great work for a uh, captain and for the whole crew. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's not just, you know, it was a very special moment uh, when uh, we saw it, uh, that it's just 90 uh, degrees. There was uh, a, this loud signal of icebreaker, like, <laughs> and, and said, we just reached the North Pole. Everyone is happy. Um, it's a loud music. We were screaming and dancing yeah. at the desk. But yeah. 
since that moment, it's another part of work that we don't see because our captain, he have to find suitable piece of ice to kind of land on it. That's not very easy thing. One day they were looking for that almost five hours. For five hours, they were trying to look in a suitable piece of ice to let us step on it. But they did it quite right. this time. And that was, you know, safety. Uh, so we um, reached the North Pole, um, I think it was, yeah, 17th of August, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. around 10 a.m. We already um, step on uh, Arctic ice and uh, we had our guards because, you know, polar bear, bears, they can come so close to us. And uh, uh -huh. we had our guards with uh, guns, but it's just to like not frighten him. Yeah. But they didn't appear. <laughs> so oh. we, we were happy that not at this moment. And uh, we could spend there around four or five hours. And of course, we had our things to do everyone yes. on board preparing uh to reach the north pole for example like this we had this uh sign oh, very cool. <laughs> with our cities because you know um everyone nice. wants actually we had some people uh from from um some of our members um uh -huh. they were from countries that um you know uh, never uh reached the north pole so uh, some of right. them were uh, first uh, who reached uh, the North Pole from the country they was born. And that's a special moment. And you could just put anything on this uh, sign. I did it with my city, Irkutsk. And also, I decided to take my family. <laughs> so it's written, my oh, family so is uh, at, at the North Pole, because they really, they supported me. They uh, they made it happen, basically. And yeah. that, was, that was a great thing. But you know why I'm having it now in my arms? I didn't leave it there. Because uh, Arctic is meant to be clean that's the main yes. thing and uh, nuclear power energy that's green energy and everything that mm -hmm. system, uh does it's all about uh, so not to breathe no, no no yeah mm -hmm. yeah you can just take picture and then grab everything <laughs> with and then you. take it away yes and nothing that sounds but wonderful that's, that's a cool rule that's a very cool rule because i think so i think so you need to pick it what an amazing what an amazing trip and <laughs> i know you know we're going to be showing um your videos and then of course um there's a wonderful picture of you pulling the ship it looks like you're pulling the ship but um yeah i mean it looked like such a what a, an amazing experience and to meet all those experts in the field particularly from the national geographic society that must have been fascinating as well. You know, you said it was from 15 countries international, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that, about international, about Russia's place in the world right now. I'm actually going to be going to the BRICS conference coming up here, and I'm fascinated with BRICS. I think it's wonderful the way these partnerships are forming with Russia and basically moving away from Western hegemony, but allowing balance in the world and innovation and, you know, no more wars, but like economic competition and innovation and economic abundance and you know that kind of thing flourishing and technological advances and you know um you're russian born I, I don't think you've been to the u.s i know you've been to other parts of europe but you married you know a londoner you married someone from from england what are your views right now or from your perspective and and people your colleagues that have never been to the U.S., right? About the aggression and the anti, you know, the anti-Russia sentiment. What are your feelings about that right now? Actually, I just, um, while you were uh, describing uh, this, I just was thinking that if I were, for example, really uh, single or just uh, had in my friend, in my friend circle, only Russian people, maybe I wouldn't see the whole picture because thanks yeah. to all my uh, international environment, uh, thanks to my friends mm -hmm. from other countries that I have, including you, I feel a lot different because, for example, what we have uh, just in my daily routine, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, my husband is trying to learn Russian and at the same time, I'm, <laughs> trying, to, I'm trying to improve my English. And uh, we, for example, watching news in different languages and uh, it's basically... Right. Uh, news from Western countries and uh, our Russian channels. Every day, it's sometimes uh, sometimes it's funny, sometimes uh, it's um, just 
incredible. I can't, I can't compare uh, these two points of view because I can just switch channels and see how, how different. Oh, well, it's uh, just, uh, it's very controversial from this side. It's telling about like, we only mention this and these facts and other things not exist. From this side, you see just what you used to hear. And at the same time, you think that, uh, well, I just need to go to the ground and talk to people mm -hmm. and uh, thanks God I have this opportunity from both sides because and, and, and speaking of which Sasha I, I want to say if you could because now this is going to be aired to a western audience if you had anything you could say from the Russian perspective to Americans just American citizens because they don't agree with the leadership of America they they don't have any animosity towards Russia uh, most American citizens what would you what would you say to them I can say that um, I've never been to America you mentioned that uh, I only visited some European countries, uh, just it was very uh, short uh, tour, bus tour actually, <laughs> and that was just for several hours in some capitals. <laughs> I actually feel uh, um, that I definitely want to uh, continue learning the world, continue discovering the world by myself. And that's what uh, as a Russian person, as a person who uh, supports my country in many ways, that's what I feel a little bit difficult right now for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. To myself uh, and um, in future uh, to my child, I want uh, this world to be open because mm -hmm. I know it never, you know, in politics, it's always about, it's mostly not about friendship. It's mostly about common interests, common goals, mm -hmm. common values. If mm -hmm. uh, different countries has something in common in these positions or ec economical development, if they can be useful mm -hmm. for each other, they are getting closer and they are uh, making it easier for each other to live. And uh, of course, for citizens um, of these countries. And uh, I really wish uh, that such a powerful unions, uh, such a powerful partnership will be more developed and in future we will have more opportunities to just learn, to just uh, discover the world by ourselves. Because it's very important uh, when, because working in media, I also understand that that uh, it's a great responsibility. Everything you're saying might be taken on the other side of the screen as, uh, you know, like 100% uh, true and 100% something that mm -hmm. like a statement that you can't change and that's very big responsibility for every person involved in media and uh, I know that uh, we definitely need to have our own experience about everything that's why I think that for foreign audience it's also maybe only one thing can be you know a kind of a way to uh, make up your own mind not just be pressured by someone's point of view. It's only one opportunity for now to have someone in your circle with whom you can talk. Maybe it can be some, you know, it's interesting thing, but it's still working. Even with uh, some countries that uh, now, like, you know, not in a friendly countries uh, list and uh, they uh, feel maybe uh, this way about Russia, we still have some mm -hmm. uh, projects in science, in uh, yes. like uh, space. technology, in space. Yes. in space, because it's also mm -hmm. can't be divided into, you know, strictly. <laughs> <laughs> it's my piece of space. It's my in Arctic region also. And um, yeah. this is something that might help because having even mm -hmm. on this, everything begin from this human uh, level, everything right. begin on human level where we can just for for example people from different countries they just have a idea to make something together in any sphere mm -hmm. uh, then they may face with some difficulties but even this thing that they not stop themselves like oh, okay i can't do anything uh with this country because now it's not uh, our friendly country i really hope that um people won't have it in their mind uh especially it's very important nowadays that uh mm -hmm. just when you're thinking about something, try to think separately first about the subject, about the value that it has. And after that, you can always find a way to fit it in a current situation. And maybe from exactly. you, these changes, this different way of thinking can 
start. And I think that's the pro projects like that, that uh, bringing people to Russia right now mm -hmm. from different countries, they're very important because they can really, I really felt it on my own because we were talking about different things with these uh, people with, uh, you know, each of them has their own mind and their own background. They also see something from media. They also know something from like their colleagues and everything. And that was very important to talk about some points and see that maybe something was just created in the minds and they're like oh no really it's not true now now i see that this is something that is very inspiring because of course we keep in touch now and uh, mm -hmm. we can if we have some doubts in something we can just message each other and ask how is it right now from your point of view and that's yeah, great. Yeah. i think that's yeah, some more way. direct citizen contacts yeah Maybe i think that's the right. only solution for and for now to keep being in contact with foreigners you know mm -hmm. from the western side we are foreigners <laughs> for us yeah other people and we need to have these connections i hope absolutely my child will live in in the world which is really ready to be open and i hope that it will happen well that's a beautiful thought and um i really enjoyed our time together talking as i always do and i learned a great deal about the north pole and so did our audience and also keeping an open mind and keeping that citizen you know as a form of diplomacy in and of itself and i think that's very important i think um hopefully there'll, there'll be a change in the regime in america and maybe that will reverberate into changes like dropping of sanctions and more mira or peace right for both our countries you know because we have more in common than we do not i know uh living here in russia because for me it's it's a foreign country I find it beautiful and people like yourself have, you know, welcomed me with open arms and just with your open heart. And I am so grateful for that. And I feel so safe in Russia. So I think people hearing you and hearing me and hearing different perspectives is important. Thank you for spending the time. I'm really excited to move forward and have you on again to talk about, you know, your next adventure because you always have some good ones. So thank you so my, much. Uh, I still have a piece okay. of art water for you so i will share it <laughs> when, when, when oh, okay yeah go ahead <laughs> and you could make a wish and you just said this uh yeah, interesting thing for me i never thought actually in russian the word mir yeah. has two meanings it's peace and it's the earth the world so uh um, right that's exactly a very powerful thing mir uh shall be on the earth it's true thanks so much for this Great time. That was first time I shared my emotions and uh, talked to someone about my trip to the North Pole. Oh, thank you. That's really special. All right. Well, you'll be on again. So we'll have more to talk about with your next adventure. Take care, <laughs> Sasha. Thank you so much.